Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I'm Steve. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to create this effect. So we're going to start in motion in the project browser. I'm going to set the preset to broadcast 1080 and the frame rate, I'm going to go ahead and set to 30. The duration is of less importance. I'm just going to leave it at the default and click open. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a drop zone for your graphic. So I'm going to go up to the object menu and choose new drop zone. And of course, the drop zone fills the screen as a 1920 by 1080 rectangle, but I want to constrain it to a circle. So for that, I'm going to use a mask. So down here, I'm going to click on this little button and I'm going to choose circle mask. Then move my pointer towards the center of the screen. Doesn't have to be precise, but I'm going to hold down Option and Shift and drag outward to create that mask. And there, there's my mask. Now, if I want to center it up, I'm going to go ahead and click on this on-screen control. And using my alignment guides, I can be sure that it's perfectly centered relative to the drop zone that it is masking. The next step is to create a text object. So I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to click over here in the blank area, the dark area, I'm going to type out text. I'm going to just use some placeholder text. I'm going to type out, actually in all caps, ring around the ro rosy. I think it's rosy. That's good. Now, text is a bit small, so I'm going to go ahead and deal with that by going into the inspector and going under format. And under size, I'm just going to crank up the size a little bit. Go ahead and press escape so I can get the on-screen controls in the viewer and then kind of center this up over the drop zone. Okay, the next step is to place this text along a path. So you're going to want to go into the text tool. So here I have text selected. I want to go into layout. And right now the layout method is set for type, which is the default. There's some choices here. You're going to choose path. Now, at first, it doesn't seem like anything has happened, but in fact, the text has been placed on a path. It's just a horizontal line, just a straight path. We're gonna change that further by going down to the path options. And instead of using the open spline, I'm going to choose circle. So there we have text around a circle. We're done. Well, not quite. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over the drop zone, kind of center it up right now. And then I'm gonna change the radius by dragging on this radius slider, and just kind of opening that up in the viewer here and uh, recentering this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna try, try to make the radius fairly large for now and you'll see why in a moment. So I've got my radius there. Okay, perfect. Now, what's really cool is this path offset control. This is a critical parameter that you're gonna end up publishing for Final Cut Pro 10. And the reason it's critical is because it's this control that's gonna allow you to animate the text around your object. Right now, it's just animating in a circle. We want it to animate around the drop zone in kind of a 3D space. So the first thing we need to do is make this text go flat. What I mean by that is we need to make all of this lay down on a, on a horizontal plane. So you're gonna select this tool here. It's called the Adjust 3D Transform tool. As soon as you select that, you'll see these on-screen controls where you can manipulate the text in one of three axes. The axis we're interested in is this axis right here, this X axis. So if I hold down the Shift key and drag, you can see that I can move it along that plane. I wanna shift drag until it's flat. Now I need to make the text stand up. Right now, we can't see it. So to do that, I'm gonna go back over to the inspector under Text Format. And down here in the Advanced section, there are some parameters for rotation. I'm gonna spill this open. And notice here, you have an X control. What you wanna do is select that and type in 90 and then press Return. Instantly, the text kind of stands upright at 90 degrees. Now, if I go back to the layout controls, you'll notice that when I move the path offset slider, the text is still in front of the drop zone, which is not what we want. We really need it to move behind the drop zone. And the reason it's doing that is because all of these elements are in a 2D group. 
and they can't interact with each other. So what we need to do is put them into a 3D group by clicking this icon. So you'll notice when I click it, it's now a 3D group as indicated by that kind of layer stack. Now notice when I go back to the path offset, it's moving, it's interacting with the drop zone, but it's kind of going into it right now. So we need to enlarge the text. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and make the radius a little bit bigger and then use this on-screen control to kind of move it over here. In fact, what I might wanna do is make the text a little bit larger. So I'm gonna go back into format and uh, boost up the text size just a bit there. And uh, there we go. And uh, maybe make the radius a little bit larger. There we go, there we go. And I'll move this over here. Try to, there we go. Now, when I move the path offset, you'll see that the text goes in front of the drop zone and behind the drop zone. This is exactly what we want. But you'll notice a problem, the text is backwards. Actually, it's backwards when it's in front of the drop zone, but when it goes behind the drop zone, it's actually correct, but we need to deal with that. And the way we deal with that is going back over to the controls here in the path options and check this box that says inside path. As soon as you do that, you'll notice now when I put the path offset, uh, the text is correct when it travels around the front of the drop zone. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to publish a few of these parameters so that we can control and animate these properties in Final Cut Pro. So the first thing we're going to publish is the radius. So clicking this little arrow here, I'm gonna just click publish. And I also wanna publish the path offset parameters. So I'm gonna click that and choose publish. And I also wanna publish the position property. So I have control over where this text appears relative to the drop zone. So to do that, I'm gonna go over to properties. And for position, I'm just gonna publish the entire position parameter options. Publish. And the last thing I wanna do is publish the text color. So I'm gonna go over to text, appearance, and next to color, I'm gonna go ahead and choose publish. So I'm almost ready to go to Final Cut, but before I do, let's check our published parameters. If you click the project icon at the top of the layers list, then click project, you'll see all of the items that are going to be published to Final Cut Pro 10. So here we see that I'm publishing the radius, the path offset, uh, the position of the text, and the color of the text. And of course, the drop zone is also included. So the last thing we need to do is publish. File menu, publish template. I'm going to give this template a name. I'll call this text around an object. Now, in terms of categories, um, I'd like to create my own category, but before I do that, I wanna make sure I'm publishing this as a Final Cut generator, and it'll be published into a generator category. I'm gonna create my own new category. I'm gonna call this just Steve, just so I can find it really quickly. I'm gonna click Create. So a new category is created. I click Publish. Okay, now I'm in Final Cut Pro 10. To locate the generator I just published, I'm gonna click the generators button at here at the top and go down to Steve. That's the category I created in motion and there it is, there is my generator. So I'm gonna select it and press E to add it to my timeline. By the way, this is a 1080p timeline. And uh, if I press command four to open the inspector, I'll be able to see the published parameters, the ones we just published from motion. And a couple things here. One is, uh, notice the path offset, then I have control of it here. Um, I can change the position of the text relative to the drop zone on X and Y. And then of course I can change the color of the text as well, right here. And the last thing I wanna do is replace the drop zone with something from my browser. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my main browser here and uh, select the drop zone. And let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and choose, I'll go ahead and choose a uh, Ripple logo. And I'll select that and click apply. And notice the Ripple logo is in there, but it's a little bit big. And in order to adjust the graphic size or video size relative to the drop zone, you simply double click 
and you get these um, controls here. I'm gonna have to zoom out just a bit. There we go. So now I can grab these control handles and I can just scale my graphic so it fits inside that drop zone, right? Just like that. You can see here, um, when I click here, um, now I have the graphic perfectly fits inside there. And I can also animate the text now. So I'm gonna start with my playhead at the very beginning of the timeline. And uh, I'm gonna set the path offset so the text starts from behind the logo where it's not visible. And I'm gonna set a keyframe right at that point. I'm gonna move the playhead a little bit later, maybe a few seconds later, and change the path offset. So now the text is gonna come around and go behind the logo. So now with just two keyframes, I've animated the text to encircle the Ripple logo. And of course, if I could, I could change the text color and make it stand out a bit. But here's where it gets fun. Um, I could put all kinds of content in that drop zone. So what I'm gonna do is try something else. I'm gonna go ahead and click this um, drop zone button and I'm gonna try an image. Sometimes maybe you wanna, you have a photo. This will also work. I'm gonna select the photo, and click apply clip. Of course, I'm gonna need to double click and then uh, scale the photo relative to the drop zone. And uh, you could put pretty much anything you want inside the drop zone and still have your, your uh, text floating around it. And you can also use video. Let's try something else. I'm gonna select this video here. And uh, this is an animated globe that uh, it's free at this, um, uh, it's a, this free globe. I'll put the link to if you're interested in it. I'll select that and click apply clip. Of course, I need to edit this. So what I'm gonna do is just bring, this is actually a video clip. It's not even a globe on an alpha channel. So I'm gonna just go ahead and make that a little bit bigger here and uh, move this, and just kind of get fit it inside that mask. And uh, there, now I have this globe. Now what's really great about all of this is this is all sitting on top of an alpha channel. In other words, this is all transparent, which means I can take another clip, place it below this generator, and you can see it's transparent, which means I can also select the graphic and uh, turn on transforms, and I can, oops, I'm scaling the wrong layer here. Um, and I can scale this, and I could pretty much put it wherever I want. So I have animated text, and I have an animated globe. It's kind of like a bug in the lower corner of the frame. So if you like that tutorial, please subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the little bell and join Mark and I every other Thursday where we answer your questions live on all things Final Cut Pro 10. Thanks for watching.